All right. So this is going to be interesting. This is going to be our first time using Zoom for a webinar like this. And we have almost everything worked out. But the cool part is, is we're all going to be able to see each other. And um, I have right now, uh, Andrea is going to be the administrator. And she's going to have the power to mute or unmute people. Um, so Andrea's waving everybody right now. So the cool thing about the Zoom is that it's kind of interactive. And we're going to go over, I'm going to talk about all sorts of goal setting stuff tonight. And then I'm going to ask some questions during and while. So Andrea, can you see everybody right now? What's up, Jimmy? I can't hear him. Can you? Hi, Mrs. Polk. Andrea, can you see everybody? I can, I can only see you mm -hmm. and then four people at the top, so I have to actually arrow back and forth to see Jim. So I'm wondering. Okay, I think there should be a way to. Um, you should be. I'm wondering how I can get you. you. And you can see. Hold on. Okay, I got it. Oh, all right, cool. And there will also be a chat box that you can click and open. Um, so if you want to write anything to Andrea, I can't see any of that right now because I'm kind of in this little little world of studio space here. But um, all right, so first of all, I want to welcome everybody. And uh, thank you guys for coming out. Sorry. Thank you guys for coming to check this Zoom, this, uh, Zoom out. Obviously, you're looking for a difference, a change for uh, 2014 from 2013. A um, few suggestions I would definitely have is if you have pen and paper or if you're going to do a, a digital note or something, there's going to be a lot of information, and I might go kind of quick sometimes, so apologize. Um, I can get you also, I can get you the all of the information. I can email it to you later if you'd like. And now this has been something that I've been putting together through multiple different uh, people from Michael Hyatt, from Dave Ramsey, uh, Eric War, and some of my own stuff. So we're going to kind of kind of go quick and I'd like to have some time for some question and answer at the end. Also I'll stop a few times to see if anybody has any questions. Um, and we're going to keep this under an hour so we're going to rock and roll. So first of all, uh, dream uh, goals. Everybody, you know, it's kind of a real cliche with it. You know, beginning of the new year and everybody's making, setting new goals, resolutions. And I actually got an email today that 75% of the New Year's resolutions are are uh, forgotten or skipped in the first. I think it was two weeks, and then 50% in the first few months, and then 25% by by halfway through the year. And, that's kind of that's kind of sad, um, but goals I'm kind of thinking of differently than a New Year's resolution. Where New Year's resolutions are obviously not something that everybody sticks to. So we're going to do a little bit more. This is going to be kind of business, kind of personal, kind of everything goals goals oriented wise. So before we get to goals, the bigger picture are dreams, and uh, dreams. Dreams kind of has a bad kind of connotation to it because you people might say, "Hey, he's a, he's a dreamer," or a dreamer is maybe somebody that might be uh, that never leaves home and stays and you know, lives with their parents their whole life because they're always dreaming. But dreamers, you know, dreaming is the start of it. Dreaming is a sign you still have hope. Dreaming is a sign you think you can win. So just in general, dreaming is good, and dreaming also keeps you young. So. Before we get the goals, before we get the visions, the first step is dreaming. And we want to dream big in, any, in anything, in our, our businesses, in our you know, personal life. We want to dream big because that's going to be you know, the start of everything. Without a dream, you know, if you have a dream, you've got hope. So first of all, it's going to be dreaming. And where, where are we all at with that? Do we still look at the big picture? Are we so stuck in the you know day to day grind that we're not even you know pulling ourselves out and seeing looking at our dream again. So first thing is going to be dreams. You know we all had dreams when we were kids. We we're all going to be something astronaut, inventor, 
doctor, whatever we were going to be when we were kids. And, you know, we had dreams. So where did those go? So we need to go back to those dreams and, and rekindle them. Next is going to be, the thing is, from dreamers, you know, that, that bad connotation of dreamers, what we don't want to do is get stuck at dreaming. Because then we're just, we're just going to be stuck there dreaming. And that's where you get the bad rap from. So the next step from dr being a dreamer is to make those visions. And visions are dreams with more clarity. So, you know, it's kind of a, kind of bringing, you know, bringing them down to earth a little bit more. So those dreams are big, fluffy, kind of vague. And then you start putting those, those dreams and bringing them into visions. And, you know, <laughs> visions are kind of a, the ability to see. And abilities are, I'm sorry, visions are starting to bring those dreams, bring them into strategic. So you can start kind of seeing a game plan for them, you know, with a lot more clarity. So it's basically visions or dreams with more clarity. So now we're bringing those, those big dreams, you know, kind of getting them down a little bit. And you know what the Bible says in Proverbs, where there's no vision, the people perish. And uh, I was going to write this down too, but I kind of thought it was a little wordy, but I love it. The quote from Helen Keller, she said, oh, the worst thing is, is when somebody can see what they have no vision. And that's coming from somebody that was... You know, blind, blind and deaf, I believe. Mute also, is that it? No, she wasn't mute, but deaf and blind. So, you know, we don't, without vision, you know, first we have those dreams, then we have the visions, and, that, and that's, you know, we'll move forward from there. So first I'm going to start, so we got those two steps. The next step we're going to do is kind of write down reflections. Reflections from this year, 2013, and kind of where you're, you're at, where you know, the best, the worst of the last 12 months, and literally just write them down. Say, hey, this is where I wanted to be. This is where I, this is what I did. And this is, um, you know, just putting them on paper. Because, you know, a lot of times, you know, you might forget. So, you know, actually, it's funny, is you can go through, if everybody's on Facebook, you can go on Facebook, look back in the last year and say, wow, you know, I did that recently. I'm looking, I'm like, holy cow, we did this with the kids. We were doing this, we're, you know, this photo book here, this, it was just kind of crazy. They actually have a recap of 2013. So reflection, it's a good thing to reflect back on the year and, uh, and not just, you know, the worst parts, but the best parts and write them down and then, then assess, you know, if you want to go through some of the, the negative parts of them, let's assess them. Why did you miss those targets and why did you hit those? So, you know, maybe it was a new, a new job or a promotion or a certain you know income level that you were going for and so write those down and then did you know this is kind of interesting that high achievers their goals they miss half of their goals and andrew and i were actually talking about this before dinner today and we're like man you miss half of your goals you set these high achievers you know top of the line business people they miss half of their goals they set in a year and you're like what the heck that's like that's failing. That's really work, really bad. And we're like, that's how does that really work out? And then, so we're talking, and then we're like, but then again, you know, look at if they wouldn't have set any goals, they wouldn't have hit any of them. So that's kind of getting us back to the point of of the goal setting. So, you know, we're gonna push you with this goal setting, push you a little bit, you know, out of your comfort zone, and uh, so something to kind of think about. So if you missed those from 2013, or there's something that you were, you were going for that you didn't hit, think about it. Hey, the, 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 you know, the best of the best are missing half of their goals. So we don't need to stick on that, but it's just, you know, just kind of a little, a little point in there. And, you know, during that year, and, and during this year coming up, the goals you set, you can always reevaluate throughout the year. So don't, you know, don't make that set in stone, then you can't come back to it and reevaluate it. Is there uh, any questions on reflection or the past past goals hitting missing? Anybody? Let's see, anybody want to wave their hand if Andrew can unmute you? Andy? No? He's just shaking at me. Jimmy? All right, so then we're gonna move on. We good? All right. Uh oh. Hey, there's JJ. All right, so I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this before. It's called the Wheel of Life. And 
It's actually from Zig Ziglar. I don't know if any of anybody has ever heard or read of Zig Ziglar, but he's like an ultimate awesome sales motivational speaker. He's he's in his like I think he's in his eighties now. Um, but Zig talks about the wheel of life and you know seven different spokes of a wheel. Seven, I guess, would be that. Um, and then kind of hitting those areas. So if you were if you're writing this down, write down wheel of life. And then the first one's going to be, and these aren't in any specific order because it's a wheel, so every you know every spoke's the same length. But uh, first one's going to be career. Next one's going to so career, you know that's that's your job, that's your business, that's you know that's however you, you however you make money to survive. We all do it. So next one's going to be financial, and I'm gonna I'm gonna say that one's going to be more geared towards personal finances. Um, and if you guys, you guys probably know that Andrew and I are huge Dave Ramsey fans. We actually have taught the class at our church three times, and uh, we love it. So we love helping people get out of debt, um, live on a budget, you know, save, give. That's just we're very, very passionate about that. So financials is, is your second spoke. Third spoke is going to be spiritual. So whatever your, you know, whatever your spiritual is. Is, is that's going to be your third spoke of your wheel. And so what we're, we're going to do is we're going to try to set goals to each one of these. The next one's going to be physical. And so that, you know, that, that's your body, that's your physical health, your well-being. Um, next one's going to be intellectual. So if you're looking to you know, read so many books a year or you know, get a degree in this or you know, whatever your goals are intellectually, next would be family. And that's family's huge, huge one. I'm, I'm, I mean, I probably put a little bit more emphasis on that. But family, your kids, your wife, your spouse, uh, your parents. Um, that's a, that's going to be a huge spoke there. And then the last spoke is going to be social. Social, you know, a lot of you know, a lot of big time business people are sometimes they they, they have a hard time. I know Dave Ramsey specifically has a hard time with the social spoke. He'll actually plan all of his uh, first. Uh, whatever his goal is, maybe 10, 20 dinner meetings or dinner friends, you know, dinner with friends the first few months of the year just to knock them out because he's that, you know, not antisocial, but just that's the, that's the part he struggles in. And everybody's going to have, you're going to be, some are going to come easy to you, some are, are going to be a little harder. You have to work physically work on them. Um, so you must be intentional in each area. And that's, so if you're thinking back about the wheel and how it's, just, you know, you are in the middle. Those are all spokes of your life. If one of them, stop. Can yes. you repeat them really quickly, please? Yes. Sorry. Sorry. I'll take a deep breath. I'll slow down. I missed one. I got six. So just repeat all right. them. So we have career, financial, spiritual, physical, intellectual, Family and social. Which one did you miss? She's still muted. Intellectual. All right. So, um, so, so kind of going back to that wheel design with you in the middle and those being the spokes. And you know, you must be, you have to be intentional about each one of those spokes. Because you know, if one of them's down, just like a flat tire, you know, you're gonna have a flat spot. And what happens when you're running, driving your car with a flat tire? You have a lot of noise, and you're gonna, you know, it's gonna, the wheel's gonna heat up, and eventually that tire is gonna fly off, and and then then it's even you know more noise and more heat. So, being intentional in all of those areas is what we're looking, is what we're looking to do. Andrew, by the way, I'm sorry. Can you hear me okay? I never asked that. Okay, cool. Because I'm just doing this over my, my phone here. All right, so wheel of life. Any questions on the wheel of life? No, Jimmy. No. All right, awesome. All right, so now we're gonna get into the goals. Holy cow, I have notes. All right, so goals. Goals are visions and dreams with work clothes on. So you know, you bring, you got those big dreams, big dreams in the clouds, and then you're starting to put. You know, put a planning, starting to plan together those, and those are your visions, and you're bringing them to you know work, and then we're bringing them down to earth, and then the next one is going to be you know you're setting goals on all those, 
and that's you know putting putting those to work, putting work clothes on actually. Uh, and you start you're going to be leaving the strategic and start moving to the tactical. So tactical is you know starting to plan it out. And, you know this is my goal. How do we get there? And uh, goals are going to force practical steps for dreams to come true. So you know we don't want to leave those dreams dreams. We want to bring them down, bring them to reality. So goals that work. There's a lot of different methods out there. People say you know, there's the SMART goals and there's different goals. Um, this is really kind of a mix of what I, what I really like. But the first part, and this would be your, your first part you would write down, Andrea, would be how do you get goals to actually work? They have to be specific, not vague, because you know vague, vague goals are dreams. So specific. So if I was to, you know, what my goal would be in, let's look back here, in intellectual. So I can't just say I want to read more books, because that's that's the dream. That's that's gonna be always my dream. Read more books. But now I need to put them to work. So specific would be, I want to read 12 books this year. Business, you know, whatever, uh, nonfiction, yeah, nonfiction. Um, so then I can say, well, that's 12 books a year. That's one a month. So I should be reading about a quarter of that book a week. And I could break it down all the way into a day. So now you're being specific about it. If you wanted to you know, lose 20 pounds, but then you could, do, you could work it backwards as well. So not just saying I want to lose weight, or I want to make more money, or I want to read more books, or let's go with the other one, family, or I want to spend more time with my kids, or I want to spend more time with my friends. Um, it's You're going to have to make... It's specific. The next part, the next, the next thing you need to make them is measurable. So that would be going kind of so specific and measurable. So that, so that would go back to the thirty pounds. If you want, you know, if it was a work thing or if it was a financial thing or a debt thing, measurable, pretty easy. If you had a chart, you know, say when we started Financial Peace University, we were in debt fifty thousand dollars, and we had a so we had a debt snowball, and we made, you know, we made a chart, and we, you know, the smallest to the largest, and we started knocking them down, and we knew, you know, that was measurable. And then we said, hey, if we keep paying this payment, you know, and rolling into the next one, we could be debt free in two years. So that was making a measurable goal. So you know, that's a so being specific, being measurable. The next one is to make goals work. They have to be your goals. They can't be your wife's goals, your husband's goals, your friend's goals. They have to be your goals. Why? Even if you know, they can't be your doctor's goals. They, you know, your doctor might say, "Hey, you've got to do this. You've got to stop this. You've got to do this." But if they're not your goals, and you, you know, you really sell the why to yourself, and you say, "Well, you know, yeah, I need to do this, but why?" You know, you're you're not going to be able to. It won't. You won't get through the hard parts of your goals if they're not your own. So when it's and 